Hello YouTube world, Mike Daddy 1911 May 1 here with the Shade Tree Survivalists. Um, yep, one's chambered. Just finished this cheek rest for this rifle and this how-to video. This video is going to be long, probably full length or longer because it has taken me a while to do it correctly. You can see I've got knobs on the side. Got these at Ace Hardware along with these quarter 20 screws. And uh, the Kydex we got from uh, bladesmith.com um, or sheathsmith.com. Either one the same damn outfit. And uh, this old GI stock, I've had it since I took Betsy out of it and put her into a uh, EBR chassis. And... Um, the little Siemens red dot, I've had it quite a while. But that cheek rest puts my eye right in line in the center of that damn scope. If you want to see how I did that, how I drilled the holes and so forth, and what I did to measure and to cut them in there, you might want to keep, keep an eye out or uh, watch this entire video, I should say. But that took a minute. I still don't have the... Um, butt plate for this stock yet so i'm about to take it out and put it back in through the plastic stock it came with but that's the way you do it that is the way you do it okay and you can see the triangle that my arm makes when i've got a proper grip even if it was an inch or two further you're not going to touch those screws okay you're not going to touch them ah, stay tuned for the rest of the video and you can see a detail of what uh, tools I used and everything. I killed the battery on this camera already once and I just refreshed it. But yeah, this one actually worked out better than the first one. And it puts your eye dead in the center and the dots dead in the center of the, uh, of the, uh, the uh, hole in the damn thing. So that, that came out just beautiful. Now I gotta take some photographs, put it up on uh, Facebook and so forth, and go and show Kimmo. So y'all stay tuned. Tools, tips, tricks that I use to do this. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Y'all please hit like, subscribe, share it with your friends if they th you think they'll get something out of it. Um, but anywho, y'all take care and thank you very much for watching. Okay, here's an overview of tools and materials you will need from left to right okay um, you may or may not need everything here just depends on uh, which way you want to do it uh, but the first thing you need a piece of cardboard so you can make a pattern okay if you have a pattern and you can fit it to the rifle first it makes making the kydex a little bit easier um, second you need a way of measuring it and uh, a, a standard ruler is very helpful, or you can use a tape measure, okay? Just depends on how you want to do it. Um, a speed square is essential, okay? Is essential to making the cuts in the Kydex and so forth. You need a way of marking it. You have your grease pencils, standard number two pencil, and or a Sharpie. Now, this is a Magnum, but a standard uh, Sharpie with a pointed uh, tip is a uh, probably a much better uh, shot, but I didn't happen to have one handy um, when I came out here. Set of dikes, that's for snipping off the uh, the corners and rounding those off. I'll give you a demonstration of that. Um, uh, a, a razor, okay, a carpet cutter, a razor, uh, preferably one that is solid, so you can really bear down on it. These are very inexpensive. I got that one at Ace Hardware years and years ago. It needs a new razor, but I'm not gonna stress over that either. A good pair of scissors for cutting out your cardboard. Um, a flat file, I'll show you guys in a little bit, but you absolutely need a flat file. You need a rounded file, AKA a rat tail file. And depending on the type of screws, either a, a screwdriver of some type, um, Allen wrench, uh, if it's got the cap hey, screw uh, heads, uh, if it's a bolt, you need a little wrench to uh, turn that in, a socket or a, uh, with on a ratchet or a, a um, 
handle of this nature or a screwdriver just whatever it is depending on the screws you're using of course some drill bits um i've got one this one here has got the little tip on the end of it okay you see the little pointed tip that makes it get centering up exactly where you want it to go a lot easier okay so it's it sticks out really well i hope the my old eyeballs it's hard to tell if, if you can see that or not but anyway just trust me it's got a little point and then uh, the, the uh, a drill bit the size that you're wanting to use now here's the deal maybe you're like me and you got a whole bunch of bolts and stuff and bolt bins laying around and you really want to find out what size they are one of these little indexes real big gauge okay you use this gauge and you just take your screw and you just find the smallest hole it will fit in and that would be this one right here which is quarter inch and it would probably screw into a 564 okay so you could use a quarter and it'll slide right through the stock or a 564 and you'd have to screw it into the stock just depends on how you want to do it um and then you find the appropriate drill bit but those are your tools okay the files back over here to the files these are essential these here, when you get a sharp corner, you want to round that corner off, you know, like in this area right here on a piece, you want to round that off and it'll, it'll uh, reduce any cracking. This here you use to round off the edges where you cut a piece. And I'll back the camera out and I'll show you guys a quick demo of that. Quick demo, rat tail file, the round file. You use that in these sharp, in these uh, 90 degree corners, which that one is not, you know, doesn't matter but anyway you just use that and you want to round that corner out and you want to do it at an angle like this or an angle like this and it'll knock out those sharp edges because when you cut this straight you got a sharp edge on both sides okay now instead of having a sharp 90 degree corner like this near your face you want to round it off radius that edge like that and all you got to do to make that happen is you just just draw you a curve with your grease pencil, whatever. You're an arch, slice as I'll darken it in where the camera can get a really good shot. Okay, just round it off. You take your side cutters, your dikes, and you just go as good as as good as possible, and you just go around that and cut it all off. Okay? Then you take your flat file. This one here because it's not going to be smooth edges and you just take that and you hold it in your hands good and tight and you just and you just work it and you round off all those little sharp the little points okay until it's truly smooth then you want to go at about a 45 degree angle like this all the way around on both sides that'll cut that sharp corner off and then just lightly smooth off the, the uh, edge i mean the little bit of of uh, wasted material there and that's all you got to do to round your edges off like this versus like this which will cut the snot out of you i promise you that'll jug the shit out of you okay now where can you buy kydex in you know one or uh, uh, four or five pieces or in bulk okay ladies and gentlemen holstersmith.com as well as um I think it's uh, knifesheath.com, if I'm not mistaken on that one. But it doesn't matter. It's the same damn place. Holstersmith.com and uh, sheath.smith.com. Um, <clears throat> that's the same place. But you can buy different colors of kydex. You can buy all the hardware, the rivets, and so forth to, to uh, put them together. But um, that is not the only place that you can buy uh, get kydex. And I'll show you real quick where you can do that at okay uh this is i got this at truck stop i don't know eight or nine years ago something of that nature this is kydex and what it is is you hang this up on a steering wheel and it is a uh, clipboard so you can do your uh quote unquote homework 
your log books back in the day, um, all your paperwork. Um, you can write letters, put a book up there, your laptop, your freaking, uh, uh, what are you, a tablet, your cell phone, whatever you can put, just set it right there and it's hanging on the steering wheel. So there are, you can buy pieces of Kydex that are already formed into something else, but also automotive body, um, like the uh, interior plastic panels in, in buses and uh, vans and cars. You can go to a damn junkyard and buy a hunk of freaking plastic like that, and it's a thermo mold plastic. Um, in order to mold it, you need to be able to heat it up. One way to do that is with a, a fairly inexpensive, I think we paid 40 or 50 bucks for this DeWalt. Now this is the high-end gun, this is not a piece of crap, it comes with a lot of different tips. Um, so you can spread the heat out or you can concentrate it, get, get up to like 700 degrees and it'll trip a 15 amp breaker if you let it go and go and go and go. But um, this is a really good gun, but you don't have to have that if you have a toaster oven. Set it on about 350, 400 degrees. Lay it in a pan of some kind where it is quite a little bit bigger than that pan. And it's, you know, it's uh, basically um, suspended between the two edges of that pan. When it gets hot enough to be pliable, it will sink down. It will not melt, melt. It'll just sink. It'll bow and it'll become pliable. Then that's where you need a way for you to hold your rifle up. And I'll show you a quick, easy way that I did it years ago before I bought all the different fancy tools that I have now. Okay, I built this little wooden thing. It's just a, four, uh, a couple of two by fours. And I was practicing um, uh, a couple of the different skills that is required to be a half ass carpenter. And I joined these sections, and it's just basically one is a little higher than the other one so that the rifle sits level. And in the rear, you got one piece that attaches the two H, because that's all there are, basically two H's. And um, in order to keep it from moving around, whatever, just one of them quick, easy, cheap seat uh, clamps that you can buy, the squeeze clamps, and just put it on there and gently, I mean, you don't want to get down gorilla tight, but that's all you got to have. And that'll keep your rifle upright right there where you can work on it, okay? And uh, let me move some crap. That's one one problem I have, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm out of damn room. And so there you go. Now, I will do, do some disassembling on this one, on the, well, I don't know, I'll leave that damn tape alone because I've got it elaborately put together so that we've got vertical lines against that long straight black line trying to uh, break it up we'll put the gi stock in there and we'll begin okay okay one other item you would like you probably uh need to have is a is a wooden dowel or a small broom handle or mop handle or something of that nature this is three quarters inch in diameter you can see it's in the top compartment um cavern is the compartment where the uh uh, the cleaning kit and the tools, the multi-tool and so forth that come with the real M14, this is where they are stored in the butt stock. That is why I want the steel butt plate that uh, goes into the rear of this thing. And the reason you want something sticking out like that is so you can step back and visually figure out how, where, how long down in your stock it's going to be and at what angle, the angle especially. All you got to do to find out the length, you push it all the way in and you put your finger, your uh, thumb right there and pull it out and extrapolate. That damn hole is literally all the way up here where your hand grasps it when you've got it in a correct uh, firing position. So if you go below, below the line I've got here that I use that grease pencil, Wherever the heck I stuck the darn thing. I use this grease pencil and my speed square or a ruler, whichever way you want to do it. You put it in line with that wooden dowel above it and draw you a line. And now you know where you can go and where you can't. If you go down too far, you're going to be in that tunnel. 
and the problem with that is is if you do decide to put your cleaning kit in there it will not it will interfere it will not fit okay so uh, a small wooden um, mop handle or one of these new fangled uh, broom handles will probably fit just fine it's a okay so we got a box here and this is a piece that I already used the pattern the last one uh, we've got it here and we're going we only need about this much of that that uh, pattern and we don't want it with a previous uh, uh, bend in it because it'll make it a little harder to uh, get it to conform to what we need So what we're going to do is just cut it right there and get rid of that piece And no, I'm not going to throw that piece away because I may have to have another pattern, right? So now we're going to try to keep it as straight as possible down that crease It's not super necessary that it's absolutely square and straight at this moment in time because you can straighten your lines that with your uh, speed square on your actual piece of kydex. And you can see that damn thing as crooked as this damn snake. Now, let's get the rifle back up here. Now the way I did it is I took the, car, the kydex and I took my heat gun and I melted it down but let's find a center of this damn thing, shall we? I should have uh, did that first. And so it ain't blanking out the camera's vision. Okay, we've got 10, just over 10 and a quarter, 10 and 3 eighths. So five. It's not a, let's see, that'd be three sixteenths, wouldn't it? And we'll need a pencil to be more precise. Five and three sixteenths. On that side, and that's the factory edge there. This uh, this end here was not cut by me, so it's, uh, it's a much sharper edge. Okay, five and three sixteenths. Now what I'll do is run it across between my two lines and that'll give it and make it pretty much square. As the center, I don't know why the hell I did it that way because that's really not what I needed. Let me see, from here to here, that's seven inches, so we need three and a half. This is dead center. Three and a half. Now this one matters. Let me see. Three and a half. Why do we want to find out the center of this? Because we want to have it centered up on the stock exactly. And a lot of times in this particular case, what we're going to do is just eyeball it. Because there is a, you see this center point right here? Okay, that screw runs right down in there. So we know where our center is because of the screw hole right there in the top. I don't know if the camera can see that very well. Okay, right here, not this here, right here. Okay, down in that long little channel there, that is where the dead center is. And we're wanting to take that piece of paint, that piece of cardboard and get it centered up on that. I'm trying to get in here where the damn camera can see it. That's what it was, not that way, this way. That was the reason why, because we want to wrap around. Boy, some days, i tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I just can't. And then eyeball it into the center down here. And then mold it. And that's the thing about cardboard. It never bends exactly where you want it to bend. 
So I'm using that sharp edge of my bench to bend it on down. That'll be very close to what we're wanting. Okay. And so let's say we got that rear edge right there where the, uh, the edge of the outer part of the stock is. This lip here, the uh, butt stock, the uh, butt plate will cover that so you don't want to go there. And that gives you an idea how far forward it's going to come. Now mark that on your stock. And you will know pretty much how far forward this thing's going. Now, the, the next thing to do, throw that stock up to your face and get a measurement. And what do I mean by throw it up and get a measurement? When you hold a rifle up to your face, now the butt plate will be at about another quarter of an inch to it if I had it, but I don't, but it, that's okay. I just need to know about where it will land on my face. I am blessed or cursed, whichever way you want to look at it, with very oily skin. It will leave a mark on that damn stock because my skin is so damn oily. So we're just going to come in here and wiggle our head around a little bit. And I can see it. It's just a little shinier. Now, this you can't do that. All you got to do is have someone take your cell phone, hold it up, pull it in tight to where your eye would be at if you're actually firing a weapon. Have someone take a, a photograph of you from this side and the other side, and it'll give you an idea. But the front of my face is ending right there where that damn mark is. But the cheekbone is right in here. Yep. Right in here. So mine does not necessarily have to go all the way to the front line here. It just has to come in right about in here. Now let's make that mark. Okay, so if we line it up square on at the rear end and we have our line down the center of it, okay? Right about there. Yep, okay. It lines up with our mark. Move it back, and here's the mark we made with our face where our face is touching it. That will come out to one inch right there. So we can do away with one inch of that on the cardboard. If we decide, now this is the thing, you don't have to do that. You can, but you don't have to. Now we lay it back up there and we decide what shape we want it to be in. And I'll tell you what, this would be a good time to have two of these squeeze clamps, but I didn't grab my second one while ago, so we'll just put it on there just to hold it in place so we're not getting uh, bad readings or whatever. But here's our line. Okay, let's say, all right, here's this top of it. This is the top of it. We can come down and we can make it sort of rectangular or we can cur curve it out like this and then round the corners off and either go all the way to the rear and go back up and make it sort of look like that. There we go. This is one way, or we can do a straight top, and we can leave it square, and just round off the corners. Or we can do it like this. And you know, that's the thing. As long as you have enough room up here at the top, to cover your where your face will be at is fine but also you need to make sure you got enough uh space between your screws that it won't cock it won't cock it won't tilt okay because if you have it like this uh 
I mean, you only got room for one screw. Or you can have your screws here and here, but you don't have any room for adjustment up and down. And what we're wanting is to have several screw holes so we can adjust it up and down depending on the, the uh, what we're wanting with it. And there's the view of those different designs. That's something you, you, you know, you can make it any damn way you want to. That's what we have to work with. So we can cut out quite a bit on either end if we so desire. I think I like the uh, this design here. I think I like this design here better than that one or that one. I just I just like that uh that it looks sort of like a lump of uh, like a big hunk of ham like on the old Tom and Jerry or something. So what we'll do is we'll come on down. To about where our our grease pencil line is can the camera yeah the camera can see that then we'll round that we'll radius that edge round it off and add a little meat to the bone and we'll come down and we want i'd say we want at least two inches between there where's my inches at so, well, just a touch more. That'd give us quite a bit of, lead. well, I don't know, two inches up to the damn top. So we got almost three. I don't think you ever gonna have to raise it higher than any two inches, but we'll give it three. And then that way, if we have a really tall scope ever in the future on this stock, we've got the room to raise our heads high enough to do the damn job and then we don't have to go all the way to the rear we don't even have to go near that damn long really i think that ought to be plenty because we want it so it doesn't tilt so we have bolt holes so that's what we'll do we'll go right there like that right there what do y'all say that look all right to you now the kicker is, is trying to extrapolate that on the exact opposite side. So we'll take the clamp off. Want to fold this baby exactly as, as good as we can. And then we'll cut it out. I got that side. Got that side, and that's what it looks like right there. Okay, now I'm gonna move the rifle and a little bit of this other stuff, and I'll lay it down. I'll show you how we trace it out, and make a pattern. Okay, so I'm tracing away, and the freaking camera's not even on, about to wear me out. But you want to, this is the slick side. You want your pencil, you want to bear down on it, you want a sharp point, and just trace it out. All the way around to the factory edge show your radius and then you want to show where your center is and move it up making sure you're on the cardboard and at the rear do the same thing you want to show where your center is that is important ladies and gentlemen very important and in this case we're going to use a grease pencil I want to make sure my center shows up so when I'm molding it flexing it okay it shows up see how white that is and let me tell you all that stuff is a pain in the damn neck to get off so it's best to use it on the side you're not um, intending on using for anything else but you see you move it you can see the the pencil shows up really well now i will put the camera back out of the way and i will show you how i use what i use to cut it out now this is where this booger right here comes in handy okay and i would not do this i'm not going to do this on my work surface because it'll cut through it but you take this thing here and you use it to score it and then you break it okay now that's all i'm gonna do right this second i'm gonna score it usually one or two hits 
Then I'm gonna make it flex and break. <clears throat> See? It snaps just as pretty as you please. And there you go. Now I've got my piece. I can get take my big piece out of the way. Now we're gonna take it over here to the uh, saw and I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, this is a 15 inch scroll saw. This is an invaluable tool for working with Kydex. You can use all kinds of other tools, but you can get hurt. Okay, real easy. This thing I saw your damn finger off faster than you can say, don't do it. So if you use a power tool, for God's sake, use some freaking sense in your head, okay? Now, what we're going to do is cut around our lines, uh, the, the pencil line, and get our pattern cut out. And then I'll show you guys how to heat it and form it and then put it on the rifle. Okay. A little bit of noise, so uh, turn down your damn volume. Don't don't come crying to me if you don't. Perfect, but it ain't bad. Where's my flat file? A bigger, more aggressive file be it a little better, but I don't happen to have one handy. Now I could have rounded these corners off with that with that saw, but let me show you guys. All right, I already got a radius drawn on there, so I'm sorry you can't see it, but trying to get the camera angle when you're doing something like this is nearly impossible. Sounds like one of my lights may be trying to go out but do you see how that edge is sort of ragged see how it's not round and there's some points and shit on it take that file and just run along it and knock those high spots off yeah and then just use your finger to fill and you can find where the high spots are with your finger. Go back with the file, knock them down. A little more right there. It's going to drive me to drink, I think. Now, you don't have to do these little things if you don't want to. You can always go out and have, buy the damn thing made at the store. Or bought at the store, made by somebody else. Me, I, I like making my own damn stuff. Personalize it any way I want. And if I buy something... I don't mean I'm going to leave it in the configuration it I purchased it. Breaking that sharp edge all the way around. And you see how it makes it fuzzy? See how that edge is fuzzy right here? Just go right back across it at an angle. 
knock that fuzz right off of there. You want to do both sides. They also, you, they, uh, I've seen guys using power tools, buffers, and all kinds of different things for this. And it's fast, and if you're producing to sell it, you'd want to be as quick as possible, but I like doing it this way. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead, get ready to uh, lower your volume. We're gonna take the uh, Pizza Kite X, center it up right over the stock, where we want, where it's gonna be at, and start heating. Check. Yeah. Oh, see it bowing, bubbling a little, not bubbling, but bowing up. Next part you got to do very quickly. Whew. That baby nose is hot. Scoot it up where you want it. You got to hold it down while it cools. See how that formed on there? Let me get a close up. Okay, heated it up, let it bend. We got our center line, which it got hot and I wiped it off quite a bit. But it's centered up right here over that, that center hole. I mean, it's off just the tiniest bit to the left. And I need to, because it's got a wrinkle right here, I'm gonna have to heat that up some more. I'm going to let it cool a little bit more, and I'm going to heat it up, and I'm going to pull that wrinkle down. Okay, we got a little bit of a wrinkle right in here, and I'm going to heat that and push it down. I believe that's gonna work. We got the wrinkle out because it had bowed up and bulged up right there a little bit. Now it is mimicking the contour of the stock perfectly. Get some better light on it. You see this side. Okay, you see how low it's hanging. So now the fun part is gonna be to get the holes drilled exactly across from each other. 
Okay, now we got to the hardest part of all. Um, I squeezed this thing down. I made me an outline all the way around on the stock. Okay, you can see it. Then on the this one here, I measured three eighths inch from the edge to the inside, three eighths inch from the bottom edge up. I made me a mark. Okay, and I did that all the way up, and it's exactly half an inch between each place I want to hold. Same thing here. Then I measure from this line to that line to make sure that we've got the same amount. And my line is drifted just a touch. And while I'm on the camera, I will make sure I fix that. Because you don't, if you don't have them where they will go up together, when you move it up, your damn holes won't line up. Okay, and because of the way the angle of the stock is, it's got to be dead on the money. So it's just slightly off, and this is going to be the hard part, getting all this. Well, what we're going to do is drill these two holes straight through the stock first on the drill press, because I can level the stock up on the drill press where I cannot level it up over here. So let's go to drill press. Okay. What I've done on the flat side of the stock, I've got me a, a miniature torpedo level. And I've got it, I'm going to hold it where it is as close to being level as possible. Now the next thing I need to do is, I got my hole. I'm going to make sure my bit is going to land right where I want it. And that's the reason this particular bit has that little point on it. I want it dead on the money. And this is a slightly smaller bit. Okay, I've got the stock level. I'm watching this bubble here. That way when the hole goes through, it will be on the same exact spot coming out on the other side. If they tilted, it'll be either higher or lower than its intended spot. So let's socket to it. We'll get off.
thing with the Sega hole. See if we can get this thing to see if it's level. Side to side, get it level, and then look through it. Oh, that's gonna be a pain in the damn neck. And it looks dead on the money, ladies and gents. Dead on the freaking money. Yeah, I surely hope so. Getting all that is a pain in the freaking neck. Okay, on the cheek piece, um, we measure down a half and half inch increments down the side. And remember, we've got our line where it's three eighths an inch off the leading edge at the, this end. 3 8 inch from the bottom so it's you know you've got some meat on the bone there so it won't rip rip through the freaking holes and then we made from our top line that's in line with the stock um half inch holes down that side did the same thing on this side 3 8 inch off the edge 3 8 inch off the bottom from the line we've got a half inch marks all the way down let's hope we put them in the right spots we're going to do one set to start with and go from there and hopefully they'll line up and i didn't screw it up i was about to screw that up i know i am hold on nope i got it right so okay let's let's sock it to it no uh no fear baby let's sock it to it check this one to make damn sure I already did this and I didn't have the freaking camera so we put it on the first hole would be a half inch rise we're using a long cotter pin and it went right straight through okay so it went right straight through and I think you're square and straight a lot of freaking measuring ladies and gentlemen a lot of freaking freaking measuring so now let's do the back holes and this is the point which uh, can make you or break you okay just using a two by four to keep it from collapsing and flattening out we got all our line holes lined up and we've got everything marked off and if our math is correct our measurements measure two or three times cut once it should work
truth. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. I had one of them. I clean that crap out of that one hole I can see. Straight through it. Any kind of screw that'll fit right straight through a solder key or even a piece of freaking clothes hanger with a hook bent in one end of it. Just to give you an idea where your holes are all square and lined up. And mine's off by just a damn touch. A damn touch. Needs to be elongated a very tiny bit toward the center of the stock. By golly. By golly. I think that will work. Let me move the cat well. Check it out. Look at your gap right here at the front where my thumb is and the gap at the rear which is a little harder to see. Okay, that's what tells the tale. And because we got more room at the rear, I offset that, that one down a little bit. But it's in an on an angle line from this line to this line. So see, it would make a an angled line. Now let's see if we can get uh, two more holes because that's not high enough yet. Needed another uh, half inch. Okay, so the next mark right here, we're going to put it in, the, in right there in that corner on the bottom side of it. And uh, that's the great thing about that round file. I can easily elongate that hole right there in this real easy. So let's cut two more holes and see what we got. Okay, we'll cut the next two holes. Boy, that's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is better than the last one I did. Okay, get that point right there in that corner. And you don't want the drill bit to go outside the lines at all. Dude, you don't have no idea. I got more switches on.
truth again. Let's see if it worked. Battery's running low, so this will have to be quick. That one lined up. That one lined up. Perfect, baby. Perfect. You hear me, darlings? They change batteries, and then we'll finish this baby up. Okay, off camera, I just went ahead and put the large bit in and, and uh, opened the holes out. So they'll be a snug fit with the screws. You got to actually screw them in, but that they'll, they'll fit. And as you can see that on both sides, as well as the cheek riser. I did those holes also. And uh, I think this one came out other than that one damn hole right there. And I buggered up a little bit right there. Other than that, it came out really well. Now, let us see if the screws I chose earlier in the day are fit for our uh, purposes. And we're going to go to the second hole. And yes, indeed, that is a snug fit. I was looking for some to use with a um, Allen wrench. Did not find any. But I didn't have all the damn time in the world either. Now you could go a little bit bigger so they'd slide right out. I just, I don't know, I like a snug damn fit. That's a Mack truck heads, you know, them 1911 guys, they gotta have that damn snug tight fit. You know, maybe it's a sex thing, I don't know. Some of you psychologists out here, you can worry about that, I ain't got the time for that mess. All right, it's coming out the other side. So I actually worried that these would be too short. It's gonna be a little long. But I got two different types of screws to do and work with. And before I snug it up, I think we're gonna go with the big these. So that looks like. Looks like all a friggin' lawnmower or something. They had some others, but I didn't, uh, let's hope that doesn't bottom out. Oh, damn, that's going to look beautiful. Um, I wasn't sure which ones to get. And here's the deal. If you do buy something like that and it bottoms out, that's simple fix. It's called a washer. That gives you some space to work with. Now this is one of those things you don't want to use power tool on. You just don't want to use a power tool because if you use a power tool and it it's way too snug and you try to sock it to it, you're going to end up busting something. And that one hole, like I said, is off just a damn touch. Oh, ah! Well, if you put the damn thing where it's in the on the money. Let me see, loosen this and back up. That, that, may, uh, that may, could have swore it was right as rain, but it is also off just a damn tiny bit. So, we'll take it back to drill press and get it squared away. And this is another reason to have a pencil handy. Just a right about that much right here so it's off now this is where you use a power tool if you've got one handy <clears throat> once sucking it back out and this thing is ain't no telling how much how long it's been since I charged this little skill is bad to the bone. Woo, hear that squeal. Let's 
Set that aside. Whoop, no, that's the one we gotta go elongate. All right. Only because this front one has already been run through, am I going to do this. The rear one I'm still gonna run in by hand. start indeed we can get it run on in there yes this is time consuming ladies and gentlemen if you want to do it do it right the first damn time you'll be all right and my screw up is so little um, the head of it should cover it completely up. And if it does or not, there you again. Get you a flat washer and put down there behind it. Oh, we have got one more check we have got to do while I'm thinking about it. That's how much went in. That is how much, so we missed it. And that was the whole idea of behind all that damn crazy measuring. Wanna make damn sure we didn't get it down in that tube. Just about out the other side. And there we go. And it is on the money, honey. That damn screw is going to be a wee short. I don't know if that's going to be safe. Probably need to get one another eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch longer. Let's see if it'll... Shit. Those babies, kids, they don't die. They multiply. Come on. Why don't y'all check this mess out right now? Finish tightening that one all the way in. Yep, there goes she is now. And there you are, ladies and gentlemen. And because of where you're going to hold the rifle in the pocket of your shoulder, your hands never, your arm never gets in contact with it. So let's put the rifle in this thing and see what she says. Tenfold, Roger. There you go, ladies and gents. Ain't that beautiful? Original GI stock system. Like that is beautiful. Cheek rest on that baby. Cheek riser. Let's turn the red dot on and make sure it's gonna line up where I think it's gonna line up. Dead on the money. Dead on the freaking money. I think this one came out better than the last one. Damn, that looks plum purdy. What do y'all think, y'all? What do y'all think? Very good. 